All right, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I think we've got some uh, quite widely spread uh, uh, members on this group. I saw this morning America, the other day from Spain, etc. So we've got a fantastic audience. Um, and um, this afternoon, uh, Justin Durek is going to take us through uh, some of his uh, air-to-air uh, photography. Um, again, Hi, just the most amazing stuff that uh, that's out there. And I think that uh, it's going to be fantastic to see what um, what's there, what he's done, how he does it. Um, you know, the mistakes he's made, etc. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just going to be some beautiful pictures. I know I'm looking forward to it. So uh, yeah, uh, Justin, over to you. Right. Thanks, Quinton. Um, yeah, a little unusual to do a a presentation like this, but um, you know, I don't think anything's normal these days. So, uh, yeah, here we go. All right, well, thanks, thanks for the introduction, Quinton. Um, yeah, basically, um, well, that's what I do. You know, I, I, I'm, an, I'm a photographer. I've been, I've been a photographer since oh, probably the age of 12. Um, I picked up my dad's camera and it, I've never put it down. But, um, you know, the, the thing is, I only got into aviation photography probably about in 2006. Um, and about 2008 started shooting professionally um, and it's just been a huge passion to the degree that I don't shoot weddings or don't shoot anything else anymore um, this is what I do and it's what I love so yeah uh, just a little bit about myself that's just some of the one or two selfies and things taken at various air shows in the states and air to air um, and yeah, just a few of the, the things that I've done, you know, um, the jobs that I've held as, as an aviation photographer, who some of my clients are, and uh, some of the magazines that I've had the privilege of, of shooting for. Um, some of the front covers I've done. Um, so these are uh, pretty much working with SA Flyer. Um, I've done some work for African Pilot as well. I've done the air show book called Smoke on Go since 2011. Um, I've been their chief photographer and a couple of international magazines and uh, that as well that I've appeared in and obviously made um, uh, front covers for. Um, I've got a very special relationship with the South African Air Force Silver Falcons team, um, a relationship that took me many, many years to build up and slowly but surely got involved with the team and I'm proudly to say that I'm their official photographer today, um, which is actually fantastic. Worked with the guys, known many, many of them um, and have flown with them on many occasions, which is, I must be honest, uh, quite, quite a privilege. All right, um, then if you can see that. Justin, do you have a call sign? I actually don't. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no, no. They've given me all sorts of things from, you know, but uh, I don't have an official call sign. No, not with the Air Force. <laughs> anyway. um, all right. And then when I'm not with that, you know, it can be pretty mundane and normal as well. Um, this was a, a photo shoot in uh, Botswana um, that I did for a company, a Swedish, a Swiss company, sorry, called Pilatus. Um, and they had an aircraft that they wanted photographed over the Okavango Delta. So uh, that was actually great. And we got to, um, that was, I don't know if this thing's got a slight delay on it. Um, but basically that was my, my office view um, for a few days while I was up there. And uh, it's a beautiful place to shoot, I must say, you know, not even from a, an aviation perspective. But just to go and spend time up there um, doing what I love is, was actually amazing. All right, let's, um, I think, here we go. I don't know if there's a bit of a delay on this thing. There, there, might, just, be, there might be a slight delay. Sometimes if there's a transition between the slides, um, oh, it, I see. Uh, it, it does tend to um, have a slight uh, delay to it. So, and and oh. I don't know if that over the course of the presentation increases. So I suppose... Uh, well, I'm going to jump okay. ahead a few slides and let me just quickly see what that does. Um, 
I'm just going to jump ahead a few slides here. So basically, in a nutshell, um, I, I do cover a lot of air shows and things. Um, and while I enjoy the air shows, a couple of pictures should flash across here pretty quickly now, hopefully. And um, it's, it's, it's what I enjoy to do. Um, I love air shows. I love being around the people, the planes, the human element of it all. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, and the other, sorry, one more aspect of, of the photography that I do do, I have a couple of corporate clients that I, they often ask me to shoot the interiors and that of, of their jets. So um, we'll do sort of the cockpits and we'll do the interior. And we obviously stage a lot of like nice meals and make it look all very romantic and nice and things like that. Um, and that they use, obviously, because they charter the, the, these jets out. And um, they hope to make it as peeling, look as peeling as possible so that, um, you know, it, it's available for their clients to hire and charter on, on a, a, for whatever basis they want to use it for. All right, there's one more there. Um, I also do what, what I actually refer to as aerial photography, which has actually got nothing to do with aeroplanes. It's just that it's shot from an aeroplane or a helicopter. So I've got quite a nice contract at the moment shooting uh, ships out at sea uh, for certain clients. And um, it, um, all right, that's not even up yet. Okay. But anyway, that'll, there we go. All it's right. Getting there. there we go. Air to air it's photography. Getting, it's catching up. All right. Okay. So let, let's get down to the, um, what I'm here to chat to you guys about, and that is air to air photography. So that's what I, I like to specialize in. Um, simply because it, it's it's quite a unique genre, um, and there are I won't say there are not many guys that had the absolute privilege of being able to do air to air photography. So um, air to air photography, as as the phrase says or as the word says, it's literally shooting aircraft from another aircraft in the air. And um, I'm going to just run you a few for through a few things now on on what that's like what we have to look out for, and obviously um, what, uh, you know, the, the, not only the dangers and that of it, but how we set up the shots. Because it's not just a case of an aircraft flying next to another aircraft and um, taking pictures of it, because that would be pretty mundane and boring. And um, yeah, so we try and, there's always, to me, I've always got to try and capture an emotion in a photograph to make it look like something really great. So air to air photography for me produces the, the greatest number of challenges. Um, and you have to worry about things like your shutter speed. You've obviously got to worry about composition. Safety is always paramount um, because it is a dangerous situation. Um, nine out of 10 times you're sitting next to an open door. And um, the other thing as well is you've got aircraft flying in very, very tight formation with each other. So unless you've got a highly experienced flight crews, it, it, um, it can be a very dangerous situation. Uh, hence, safety is always paramount. And we brief very, very well prior to all that. I've got to watch my horizon. I've got to watch my backgrounds. I've got to watch for reflections. Um, and you've got to realize you're working in a very different dimension. You're almost working in a three-dimensional space, uh, no longer a two-dimensional space. So before most air-to-air -air shoots, or should I say the big corporate ones, um, we'll sit down, we'll have a, a, a brief, and the brief will usually come from the client, um, telling us what sort of images they want to see, um, what they envision that they're going to use the images for, and um, then we'll sit down and basically work out the logistics of the entire shoot, how we're going to position the aircraft, what do we want in the background, um, so there's a photograph coming of us just sitting in a brief with all the pilots and the client and just discussing how we are going to, to pull this whole thing off and all together. All right. Um, sorry, yeah, there just seems to be quite a delay. So I'm actually oh, trying to fine. jump slides you know, ahead of what I'm actually talking about. Justin, you know right. what? Are you, looking, are you looking at the stream on Facebook? Yes. Okay. Ignore that completely. That's about 20 seconds behind. Really? Okay. Yeah. Right. So just, if you, if you just look at, um, at what's on your, uh, your PowerPoint, 
um, yeah. on your screen, that's uh, that's uh, will be the live because the the the, um, the the Facebook thing is about twenty seconds um, behind. So ignore that completely, Shadi. I, I should have told you that. <laughs> Sorry, mate. No, no, that's no sweet. That's no sweet. Okay, cool. All right. So basically, on most of the shoots, what I do is I like to take the door off. Um, you can see us there removing one of the doors of a B fifty eight, um, and there's a shot taken from another aircraft of what it would look like sitting in the aircraft with the door off shooting out at, at my subjects. Um, there's another one there, just give you an idea, the door's off over there. And um, another one or two air pictures of aircraft there with doors off. And once that, other than that, um, my office sometimes is not having a door off. And then we fly in a closed cockpit and that's when things get a little bit different. Um, you now have a lot more to worry about other than just the, um, uh, you don't have an open door anymore. So now you're sitting in a much tighter, much more confined space. You're strapped to a chair really, really tightly. Um, in this case, yeah, it's in the back of a Pilatus PC7 Mark II, and you're sitting on an ejection seat, which is, it's a pretty tight fit. Um, so it becomes very uncomfortable, very difficult to work in such a tight space. And you now have major reflections in the canopy to worry about as well. So I prefer shooting through an open door, um, but it's not always possible, depending on what we're shooting, um, especially when it comes to uh, formation aerobatics. Right, and as I've said to you, there's, uh, there's a lot to worry about when it comes to air-to-air. Um, to -air. So there's a lot to think about. As I said to you, my first, my first thing that I, I look at in any photo shoot is I look at my shutter speed. Um, I'm going to work out exactly what shutter speed I'm going to need for the shoot. And the reason for that is if it's a propeller aircraft, um, I like to capture the entire disc of the propeller uh, because that is how I see it in reality. So in a shot like that, you'll see um, what I'm talking about. And just trying to, to keep the whole, um, the whole disc of that propeller completely round. It's not always possible, um, especially when you're shooting aerobatics. Um, that's simply because of the g-forces and the speeds and that involve um, shooting at those slower shutter speeds makes it incredibly well not even difficult it makes it impossible so my I, love, shutter speed uh, is I love this uh, the shot here i mean the the uh, it's 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 almost too perfect you know where all those yeah. uh, the planes are one behind the other behind the other uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a, yeah that's the difficult part actually um, no, it really is it's, it's, it's the difficult part is to get them all lined up like that and that, that requires skill from their side second to none so that particular shot um, those aircraft their blades spin quite fast so I can shoot at about 125th of a second there um, when you shoot old aircraft like these warbirds you drop right down to 150th of a second so that becomes a lot more challenging um, as these props obviously turn a lot, lot slower um, simply because they are piston engines and the, the previous one was a turboprop. But your props turn a lot slower with these. Um, so shooting warbirds, is, it's amazing. It's, it's fantastic to get them up in the air so close to them, but they are very difficult to shoot um, at a slow shutter speed. All right, sometimes I will slow the shutter speed down even more than what is necessary. Um, and the reason I do that simply is uh, to create an effect um, of speed. So that I'll normally do it when we are low to the ground. So if I want to create that sense of speed, we'll take the aircraft as low down as, as it's safely possible. I will then crank the shutter speed down to like a 30th of a second, um, just to give a sense of speed, as you can see in that shot there. Um, obviously, you need to have nice and smooth air when you do stuff like that. Absolutely, <laughs> otherwise you, you're just going to be bouncing all over the place. I mean, yeah, you do. Yeah. That's so it. this one, we we were over the bush doing a photo shoot for Arlac, and um, we had done a lot of pretty sunsets and all sorts of things. And then I suggested to the guys, let's drop it down to treetop level, um, and and just get some nice photographs that give it a real sense of speed. And the only way to do that, um, another shot that I've done that with here was with a uh, pilot called Elton Bondi. And um, he had an idea. And this, this, this shot basically broke all the rules of how we normally do photography. Normally, the pilot would formate his aircraft on us. Um, he watches us. In this situation, because he couldn't see us, we had to formate our aircraft on him. 
um, in order to capture that shot. So very, 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 very different type of shoot. Um, required unbelievable skill from the, the camera ship pilot uh, to be able to keep formation with this guy while he was just watching where he was going. But once again, nice and low, slow the shutter speed down just to give an absolute sense of speed. And uh, not something I usually do when it comes to helicopters because helicopters, shutter speed is, um, is a difficult thing. Um, rotor blades do not turn as fast as what they look like are turning. So to, to shoot helicopters, we often have to um, drop that shutter speed even more uh, if you want to capture the full disc. It's not always possible because the platform you're shooting off um, is really rattling and shaking uh, quite profusely. So to get it down to a 15th of a second in the air, it's not something I do often. Um, and it's something I'll usually just mess around with once the shoot's done. Um, I'll get the guys to come alongside and I'll, I'll try and mess around and, and capture something like this. Yeah, because obviously it's, uh, it's not as simple as um, when you're on the ground and you've got uh, your two feet to, to stabilize you. Yeah. If, you're, if you're in the, you know, the camera ship, you're, you're kind of jiggling and what, yeah. yeah. Must be Especially if that camera ship's a helicopter. Yeah. Um, you know, and you, you, if, you, if you lean against any part of the fuselage, uh, there's no ways you're going to get a clear shot. So you've got to really sort of suspend yourself um, in the open door. And yeah, and, and, and yeah, you try for a shot like this. It doesn't always work. Every now and again, you get it right. It's nice. Uh, but this is not what the client's after. You know, the client is after, believe it or not, they're after the scenery in the background and stuff like this. So, you know, like I say, once the shoot is done, and the client, I've got the, the, the brief has been fulfilled. Um, you know, we'll mess around and have some fun with stuff like this. But um, that's, yeah, that's uh, going from the one extreme to the other, when you've got to shoot at really slow shutter speeds, um, then we can go and, if we go and shoot things like business jets or stuff like that, then shutter speed goes out the window and it doesn't matter because there's no moving parts on the aircraft anymore. So we can now, um, we can crank up the shutter speed life becomes a lot easier and now you just literally have to start playing with with composition and things like that um, trying to bring the the jet in as close as possible and just to position it for different angles um, and different backgrounds things like that so um, obviously that was quite close to us that that biz jet there there was a photo shoot for Embry in Brazil um, doing that one and then the next slide coming up now I'm not sure what's on your screen now if it's still the biz jet. I oh, know, there we go. Um, shooting something like the Impala that was over Durban. Um, and that, that, uh, that was shot with a 17 to 40 lens at 17 mil. So that fuel tank is pretty much just out of reach of my elbow. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say that at 17 mil, that's going to scrape your arm. It's going to leave paint on yeah. your elbow. No, your it was elbow. tight. Yeah, no, it, it's tight. But that's how many these guys fly. So I've got, a, that's I've got a, just a quick question about that yes. um, that image, uh, the, the the previous one. Um, yes. So how how much retouching do you do or, or editing afterwards? I mean, I know it's a uh, you know it's it's a difficult uh, thing. Your clients are, are wanting to get the best images, etc. But you know, it's it's not always easy to um, to have a, an image of a, a plane with a, a fairly bright sky uh, on the other side or behind it, etc. How much, how much do you do in post-production to, to sort of pull that back and, and you know, uh, just make it look like a, a world-class image? Yeah, I think it depends on the image, as you said. So certain images, obviously, if I'm going to shoot into the light, so mostly what I do is on an air-to-air -air shoot, um, I will generally put the two aircraft into an orbit. So we will continue a circle. So as we're changing, we, and the reason for that is the light changes constantly through the turn. So I will make sure that I get shots that are backlit, sidelit, frontlit. Um, and then, of course, once we get to the backlit shots, um, I will push my exposure compensation up, um, obviously to expose for the aircraft, but then I start losing my background. Um, so yes, that is when I do. I, I will sit in post-production and I will do what I need to do um, to make the image uh, suitable for the client. So if it means adding a little bit of here and there, pulling back on a lot of highlights usually mm. um, when it comes to shooting into the light, uh, reflections of the water ob obviously often blow out quite a lot. So yes, when it comes to post-production, I won't say it's very heavy-handed, 
but then there are certain shots uh, like that one with a buzz jet where I've had to put a bit of creative flair to it um, just to make it look like something for the client, yes. Otherwise, that sky is snow white. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Thank you. All right, cool. So for me, um, I, I like to do air-to-air -air photography um, where it's really in your face. Nice, tight, close-up, just to really put you into the, to the action. Um, and I've, I'm privileged to fly with a lot of South Africa's top uh, aerobatic pilots that are able to do that. So they're able to put the plane right where I need it, literally outside my door, um, keep it there for me, and I'm able to shoot that. So I mostly shoot with a 24-105, sometimes going up to a 70-200, to 200, uh, depending how tight I want that shot. But then the difficult part with that is always your composition. You've got to maintain a sense of balance. You know, to chop off wings and wheels and tails um, isn't always ideal. But when you do do it, you need to do it with a, with a sense of balance um, that the image still looks whole and it doesn't look like something's been cut off. Uh, so I've always got to watch for the balance uh, in, in the composition of the image. Sorry, just a question there from, um, from Mojo Machen. Um, yeah. uh, do you use um, a, a polarizer to see through the canopies? Uh, not at all. Um, I've tried that once and all I got was rainbows. So definitely not. Um, polarizers through canopies uh, don't work at all. Um, I don't know if it's the shape of the canopy or whatever it does, uh, but the minute you turn that polarizer, it's just rainbows all over the place. So I have tried it, doesn't work. Um, I'm going to show you now, there's a shot coming up uh, to, that'll, just now that'll give you an idea of the reflections and how I combat, how I combat those reflections. Okay. Okay, so another shot here looking at composition. Um, I still, in spite of all this, I still try and maintain my rule of thirds. So this one is not an, as much of an in-your-face type of shot, um, but absolutely far more... Um, to do with the mountain and the stadium and the background. So this is often what the client wants. I mean, the, the client obviously often wants pictures of their aircraft, but they want it in, a, in a, an environment where they can sell it. So uh, that particular shot was done for Team Extreme for Garmin, um, and they want a Table Mountain in the background. Uh, table Mountain has been pretty good to me in the sense um, Living in Cape Town, I've had a lot of um, clients come to me and uh, wanting that their, their air, aircraft be photographed over Table Mountain. And of course, this was the most iconic one. Um, Roger Mashin will remember this one well. <laughs> he was with me that day in the plane. He did tell um, me a few stories. <laughs> yeah. So shooting this one for, for Iron Maiden was uh, really an epic photo shoot and one that I will definitely remember for a long time. Um, having a 747 just barking outside your door um, was not something you get to do every day. Right, and um, yeah, this, this particular shot as well was for Piper Aircraft in the USA. Once again, they also want a Table Mountain in their photograph. So uh, that's, that's obviously just how we do that. Then, um, once again, uh, photographs, using backgrounds, obviously the composition, um, all depends on the client, what they want in their background. And this particular shot was for Embraer in Brazil. Um, they wanted, we flew all around the coast, just getting different types of photographs for them. But background is important. Um, so obviously when I'm, when I'm shooting, I always have to look at the background. It, it, it's almost more important than the subject, uh, which is, um, obviously the aircraft. So for this, we, uh, we had to do a photo shoot for the South African Air Force. It was one of their big parades. And as you can see, how bad the background can be. I mean, there are aircraft in that photograph, so it's not great. Um, but obviously, I moved them over to a, a, a part where it's a lot cleaner. So I've always got to watch that background. And it's not always just have about having a clean background or having a cluttered background. But a clean background definitely makes a huge difference. Um, it just helps your aircraft to stand out more. Um, and it, of, often it puts into context what the client has wanted. 
So for this particular shot here, this was done for Pilatus. Um, they sent me off to um, Sossus Flay to go and photograph one of their PC-12s. And in their brief, they wanted the red dunes. So that's all they wanted there. And uh, we've circled a couple of these times, got up really early so we could get the nice deep shadows on the dunes. Because uh, shooting this at midday would have just been pointless. So yeah, this was a, a very, very early morning start. Uh, take off literally at sunrise uh, to try and get these over the dunes like that. So your background plays a, a really, really big role. Um, this particular shot as well, um, Menno Parsons in a P-51. Um, he wanted a shot of the, the, the stadium and uh, just incorporating that in. And then this particular client here, they wanted the bush. This aircraft was built to work in and out of the bush. So naturally, the background formed a huge part of, of that as well. Uh, just another shot of the use of a different type of background. And also uh, slightly slower shutter speed there. Much slower, yes. Much slower. Yeah, you can see that. So yeah. As you can see, you know, the background can really make or break a photograph and it really forms part of the, the, the composition of the photograph. That's Just lovely. using all these. Okay. Nice, plain, simple. This one was for Patrick Davidson for Red Bull. Um, just shooting over the dunes in Cape Town. Uh, just to get that red and blue and yellow to stand out nicely. We had shot over the sea that day as well. But I just found with the blue aircraft, um, the sea wasn't quite working for me the way I wanted it. Um, so we headed out over the dunes and uh, it definitely stood out a lot better. And I suppose that's the thing, you know, you, you, you've, you've made all the plans, uh, everyone knows exactly what's happening, but um, you know, if during the shoot you realize that it's just not working, you've got to, you've got to change it and, and, and make sure that, yeah. uh, that it does work. It's just one of those things. Well, that's it. You know, you know we, we, we can plan the shoot right down to how many turns we're going to do over which area. But when we get out there and things are not as what they seem, uh, for instance, this particular shoot here, um, I don't want to say it went south. Um, it was actually, it turned out for the better. We were supposed to fly right around the whole Cape Peninsula photographing this aircraft. And as we started approaching sort of the sea point area, these clouds started rolling in. Um, sorry. So we had to make a drastic change of plan. Uh, these things just sort of came out of nowhere. We made a drastic change of plan. We managed to get a few orbits in with the clouds in the background. And then of course had to fly back. Um, you know, it would have been very unsafe to go through that. So plans do change. Um, and we do allow for that in the briefing to say, look guys, if things go wrong, if we lose radio contact, the shoot gets called off immediately. Um, and, um, that's that. Okay, once again, backgrounds, um, just always putting the aircraft in its environment. Um, and I've got a particular client that um, they're based up in, in Switzerland. So they love the African background and they're always sending me on photo shoots where uh, I've got to be literally in like deep dark Africa. That's what they like. Photograph like this. Um, oh, that is was, so nice. Was pretty well planned. Um, we shot this out of the back of a C-130 and um, the whole idea of the photo shoot was to try and get the Silver Falcons straight at us with Table Mountain in the background. The hard part of this entire shot was to just to plan to tell them exactly when to switch the smoke on. Uh, because if I'd switched it on too late or too early, I would have covered the mountain. So it was just a quick bit of planning. Um, but once again, you know, the call came the guys did it. We got the shot. Everybody was happy. Were, were they tracking at the same speed as you? Absolutely. They are literally, yeah, they, they have to. 90% um, of my photo shoots, not even 99%, the, the subject aircraft is traveling at the exact same speed as me. Okay. So this, this kind of shot here just gives you an idea of the reflections that I have to deal with in the cockpit. Um, as you can see, it's, um, there's reflections everywhere. So trying to shoot just to the side of myself, you can just see what most of your photographs end up like. And so I've got two choices here. I've got to try and shoot between the reflections um, 
or I need to turn the aircraft in such a way that there's no reflections in the canopy. And that becomes quite tricky because usually when I turn the aircraft to have the reflections disappear at the canopy, um, the air, my subject aircraft is no longer in the right light. So most of the time I just end up having to shoot in between the reflections. Um, the direction of light is always very important for me. Um, I will usually find in which direction the light's coming, which, which highlights the propeller the best, and that's usually the light that I will try and fly in. As I said to you, I either like to have that full prop disc. If I can't get that, I'll make the prop disappear completely. So to make it disappear completely, we just change the light, the direction of the light, and uh, it's still there, but it doesn't stand as prominent, and as long as I don't see any static blades, I'm happy. Direction of light, once again, um, quite important. In this particular case, I took the guys above the clouds, uh, simply because what happens is the clouds actually act as a huge reflector, and it lights up the underneath of the aircraft as well, um, which we needed here for the branding uh, <coughs> for Puma. So it's nice. It's not something you often get to do, to get above the clouds. Um, and it's actually amazing how soft and beautiful the light is when you're above there. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's um, like a super pastel, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's so no, awesome. It's magic. You, don't, you don't get light like that no. uh, anywhere else. Uh, it's, it's just like working in a, a, a light box, you know, exactly. there's just light everywhere. <laughs> it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I mean, I, it looks like it's, uh, it's been worked and worked and worked in post-production. Yeah. Like there it, is but... almost no Photoshop yeah. on that. Uh, you Amazing. don't even need it. I mean, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then obviously direction of light. This is shooting into the light again. Um, once again, very little Photoshop and that used over here. This was literally at the last light of the day. We went out and shot this um, and we did a whole series of photographs into the setting sun, um, shooting silhouettes, exposing for the aircraft. Um, but yeah, the light was just really, really low at that point and we were able to actually get some really nice stuff. Also, last light of the day, I uh, often really like to shoot then. You know, you get nice long shadows on the ground um, and the rich, rich colors that come out. Um, with the, that kind of light. Also, like I said, you can go for the silhouette type look, um, which I don't often do. And um, this is early, early morning, literally just at sunrise as well, taking this photo of the air to air with a glider and uh, just getting that, that, that light pouring in as it's coming in low level across the ground. Justin, I've got a question from uh, yeah. uh, Honor van der Waal. Uh, who's um, who's going to be doing a talk for me uh, very soon, I hope. Um, okay. He wants to know, what uh, what do you use for chase uh, aircraft? Whatever I can get my hands on. So, no, really. Um, look, to be honest with you, um, most of the time for, for instance, this particular shot here, we used a, a Cessna caravan. Um, that's a very expensive camera ship to use, but... It, was, it belonged to the client, so for them it was just a fuel. Um, mostly we'll use things like Cessna 182s, uh, Cessna 210s, 206s. So, yeah, small single engine, fixed wing. Uh, my favorite aircraft to use is an A36 Bonanza, uh, just simply because it's got a really nice big door that can come off, and it's got a seat that faces backwards. So I don't have to sit on the hard floor on my bum, I don't have to sit on my knees. I can actually sit in a nice, comfortable chair and shoot. And I've got a huge window um, out the back to, to actually to cover. So those aircraft are really nice to shoot out of. Um, I've shot out of Saratogas. I've shot out of Senecas. Um, helicopters, I only like to shoot out of if I'm shooting another helicopter. I don't like to shoot a fixed wing aircraft out of a helicopter. It becomes a very, very difficult thing to do. Uh, simply because the fixed wing pilots don't like to get too close to the helicopter. And also the, the rate of bank angle is never the same with the two aircraft. So it becomes very, very difficult to shoot out of that. I've shot out of um, the PC-7s. I've shot out of the back of an L-39 jet. Uh, so it all depends on what I'm shooting. If we're shooting airliners, we'll generally use a jet. Um, 
or something that's really, really quick. I've used open aircraft doors as well, but it becomes quite, quite difficult to do that. Um, You've got a slow shutter speed. You're going to be buffeted quite a lot. and uh, A heck of a lot, yeah. yeah. So, all right. Um, just getting back to more of the light there. Um, last light of the day. I'm just going to whiz through these quickly. Just a few more here. All right. Okay, so let's have a, just a look at, at some of the challenges when it comes to air-to-air -air photography. And the one is the formation flying. So when it comes to formation flying, you really, really need to have guys that are highly trained in this, know what they're doing, because everybody's lives are at stake here. Yeah? And so I've got to get the guys as close to me as possible. I've got to be in constant communication with, with both pilots or with all the pilots at the same time. So that was shooting two aircraft. Two aircraft together is pretty easy because the number one slot just falls onto me and the number two watches him and I can just tell him to go up or down as I need him. Three aircraft become a little bit more tricky because once I've positioned number one, I've got to now position number two and number three just to get them, uh, to get all their tails lined up uh, or to get all the propellers lined up. I, I, depends how which way I work it. Um, getting four aircraft together becomes a lot more difficult. Um, trying to get, so these were, these were four different types of aircraft. So the tails weren't working for me at all. So what I did was I lined up all the, the propeller spinners, as you can see. So that's how I've got to work it. So then I will, each one has a call sign, usually just a number. And I will say, right, number three, can you move back about two feet? He'll slide back. Once he's moved back, I can then move number four into place and so on. Five aircraft, once again, becomes a lot more difficult. Um, but when you're working with guys like the Silver Falcons, they make it quite easy. Um, and the biggest one to date has been six aircraft, which was oh, also for the Silver Falcons. That's ridiculously um, in line. Yeah, I know that was. Um, even they were blown away by that. Because <laughs> even yeah, six aircraft to keep in, in, in a line like that, you know, it's, it's, it's almost impossible um, to the degree that there's so much buffeting and that going on between the aircraft that there's no point, well, there is one point in time where they all line up. But other than that, it's all over the show. So it is incredibly difficult. But the up and down, that sort of relaxes with the air. It's the, it's the lining up of the tails and the spinners that, that I've got to get right first. And as soon as I've got that right, we just wait for that right moment when everybody lines up and we get the shot. Um, shooting aerobatics becomes quite a lot more challenging because obviously you now have to deal with G-forces. You, um, you now, your camera now weighs 13 to 15 kilograms and uh, it becomes a lot more difficult to, to try and maintain composition, shutter speed, um, you know, while your eyes are being pulled through the back of your head. So this type of shot here um, would give you an idea. We totally inverted over here, um, trying to get uh, the, the, the Langevin Lagoon plus all four aircraft. Uh, and I'm literally shooting through the bottom of the canopy looking straight up. Uh, these I try and get the guys next to me. So this would be during a barrel roll or a loop. Um, the one on the left was actually a barrel roll. The one on the right is a loop. So just that moment in time, it gives you the impression that we're riding up ballistically next to each other, but it's just a part of the loop that we're getting that shot in. This as well, um, also photographed upside down. Um, some people look at a photograph like this and, and think, okay, I was sitting in a helicopter and these guys just sort of loop past me uh, to get the photograph, uh, which not, that's not how air to air works. The only way to get that photograph is to actually be in the aircraft and to loop over the top with them um, shooting it inverted. All right, um, just quickly what I call the shooting, the extraordinary. Um, often I get asked to, to take photographs by the client, which become almost not impossible, but it requires me to think a little bit outside the box. So this particular shoot here um, was for Sky Messaging, and they wanted a photograph of their airplane pulling the signs that they normally pull, but not only pulling the sign, um, we still had to make a front cover out of this. So the hard part was those were the shots that we were like getting. I've got the airplane and the sign 
And I wasn't happy with that at all. And I said to them, look, this is not working. These are nice, pretty pictures, but this is not front cover material. Um, we need to do something more. And I got him to come sort of a next, sort of closer into the aircraft, uh, just sort of 45 degrees to us. And that was sort of more the angle that I was now getting. I still wasn't quite happy with that because it, it wasn't fitting nicely into a, a front cover. So the only way for me to actually shoot that was to sort of step out of the aircraft slightly, uh, still tethered in, of course, um, and to actually stand on one of those wing struts you see and shoot straight back. Um, and that was the resulting image. So that was the one I was after all along. And of course, that was the front cover eventually which uh, just made a lot more sense to me than uh, an aircraft flying sideways with a banner. Right, and then often what happens is um, I get asked to do a shot, uh, something different, something unique, and then I'll go and Google uh, what other guys have done. So I had to photograph four pit specials together and they wanted something different and unique because look, I had done it all before. Those are my shots over there. We had shot them in that sort of position time over and time over and time over again. And the client wanted something new and something different. And I couldn't find anything online. I couldn't see anything. Whenever I looked it up, this was the, the, stand, the stock standard shot. So anyway, eventually I decided to separate the guys a little bit to try and fill out the frame a little bit more. Still wasn't happy. I still had too much negative space in it. And you keep moving them around um, until eventually I, I, I settled on uh, something like this. So, oh, I love it. Yeah. So, that, so eventually, you, you know, you work, I had to sit there and work out how I was going to fill all the gaps in the sky, um, moving number two, then moving number three, then telling number four to come this way a little bit. So, they are completely out of their normal formation references, um, which is a very unusual thing and a very difficult thing for them to fly. Uh, but it was the only way we could make this work. So since then, obviously, mm. I've, I've just had a few variations on that um, and just tried to, to highlight one aircraft and, and make the other three fall into the background. Whoa. Just doing something like that, you know? So nice. Yeah, so that, um, that was a particular shot as well that they wanted, um, just filling up that whole frame um, and just not having a standard echelon as they would normally fly just the more i look at that um i just think uh you know the the everything is in exactly the right place you know the 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 plane second uh you know from us uh, i suppose vertically um is, is just enough back and uh, man i love it yeah. absolutely love it yeah this 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 shot took quite a while to put together i think we 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 sat in orbit after orbit um just repositioning everybody um, and then, of course, I didn't want to run out of smoke. So once I had everybody <laughs> positioned, I would say, okay, smoke on. And everybody would put the smoke on. We'd get a few shots and I'd shout smoke off, reposition the guys. Because uh, obviously we could just keep going like that. And it's happened before that I've run out of smoke. And then we, we have a problem. So then also shooting the extraordinary in the sense of this was one of my dream shots that I've always wanted to do. We briefed on how we were going to do it. And um, getting two phenomenal aerobatic pilots together in Jason Beamish and Nigel Hopkins. Um, getting Jason to get that propeller almost in my door um, while literally trying to fly sideways. I mean, you can see the smoke's heading off to the one direction. And um, yeah, putting it all together. So that was a very difficult shot for them to do. Um, and while I've got Jason right in my face, I'm trying to position Nigel in the red aircraft a little bit left and right up and down just to get him to fit nicely into the frame. Um, just as well, you know, this is one of the few shots that I've actually shot of an inverted aircraft without me being inverted. Um, once again, just getting him to try and come in as close as possible just to give that, that sense of that. Um, this was another shot that I just wanted to try something different with. Um, quite a bit of Photoshop involved here, obviously with the coloring and that. Um, but it was more about just getting a, a look that you would never normally see um, in any type of shoot. So we shot this out the back of a Harvard. I removed all the canopies and stuff, and I actually was standing on the back seat so that I could get myself above the tail to try and shoot that one. 
uh, photo shoot for Bid Air Cargo. This was shot out of a propeller aircraft, which made it quite a challenge. Um, but uh, yeah, doing something very different there. That too was also, as I said, shooting something out of a propeller aircraft, um, making it a, a very difficult shoot to do. Then trying to do something different again, as I said, um, I did this at an air show up in Vaterkloof a few years ago, and I never liked it. It was a terrible photograph, but it was all I could do. Um, it was never an official photo shoot. I just tagged along for the ride to try and get some photos of the Silver Falcons with the, the 737. And the background was cluttered. We could never get into a nice clean background. Everything was just side on. I wasn't happy with it at all. And I vowed that one day I would make the shot work differently if I ever got the opportunity again. So the opportunity did come up at Longabon about two years ago. And that's me in the back seat of one of the Silver Falcons. You can see the Mango 737 there in the foreground. And the Silver Falcon is just above me. So we were just sort of chasing the 737 down to uh, formate with it. And I got everybody lined up. And I said, right, now's my opportunity. I've got a nice clean background. We're going to try something. And I positioned the guys into where I wanted them, uh, got the smoke on. And then what we had to do for the shot was I actually had to roll over the top of the formation um, and shoot down. So to create that, that sort of a Awesome. So yeah, we had to literally be upside down to get that photograph like that. Fantastic. So yeah, I was very happy with that. Um, took a lot, long time planning and there was a long time waiting for that one to happen. But uh, needless to say, we were very, very happy. Also very limited time on that one because um, apparently there were passengers waiting to get on board that plane. <laughs> and then shooting something of the extraordinary again. This was a stunt that I had to photograph for Puma. They chained the aircraft together, uh, took off in a formation. Um, so in itself, that was already quite a, quite a feat. Um, they chained the aircraft together, flew in formation, and then to top it all off, went water skiing while they were chained together. Whoa. So yeah, it was something pretty different uh, to do. Um, and then in a previous shot, the water skiing we've done quite a lot of. A um, couple of guys have done it. We've all done some water skiing photos. And then the one day we decided to do it, I said, I'd like to get onto the water as well to try and get a different angle. So we got onto the water um, just slightly in front of the very left-hand aircraft. And I was able to shoot backwards um, to sort of capture more of the, the action that was going on in there. Sure. That's amazing. So I suppose the, just looking at the, the right-hand side uh, wheel there, um, you don't actually have to be touching. I mean, you, you pretty much just, if you're just above it, you're going to still get that, uh, that sort of spray, huh? Yeah, is it, is look, that's bouncing. bouncing. Yeah. That wheel is bouncing. The, that, that, the water, you can feel when you hit the water, uh, you can feel that you've landed. It, it's, it's, that water is hard. So you can see the water is quite rough. So hence there's a bit of bouncing. Um, and the guys actually prefer it to be a bit rough like that. Um, when the water is glass, glass smooth, they have a very hard time judging exactly where they've got to put it down. So they actually prefer there to be a bit of a ripple on the, on the surface. But yeah, there's a sequence of shots like this, obviously, and some of them, the tires are well embedded in that water. And then I think, oh uh, yeah, all right, no, that was just a video. Um, all right, I think that's from my side. We're all good. Well, wow, fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I think it's uh, <laughs> some amazing images there, and I think the, the you know from uh, you know from from my part, um, uh, you know when I come at a picture, you know looking at uh, I suppose more of a, a, an editorial type uh, look uh, and, and lighting, etc. Um, I can't help but uh, look at some of the shots. Uh, you know, the, the, I'm, I'm not sure which one it was. It in, an Embraer in, in Hart Bay. Um, yes. Yeah. So um, you know, on the on the, the 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 front of the nose, there was a bit of a highlight, obviously from the the sky on the one side. And it, it, there's something about your images that um, that I really enjoy, and I, I think it's it, they they feel quite nice and polished, even though it's it's so difficult to to have them polished in the sky. You know, it, it's uh, it's yeah, I hear what you're saying. 
that you can, uh, you know, you, you pretty much whatever the atmospheric conditions are, you've got. Um, and the the um, uh, the Harvards, uh, what was it from the Puma, uh, the Puma Harvards, yes, above, above the clouds. Um, you know yep. that uh, that uh, also just the, the the colors and and that sort of thing. And then the uh, I'm coming back to all the Harvard ones, the ones where, okay, where no, the, that's fine. the smoke on them, you know, coming behind them, and that they were just positioned so nicely. Um, you know, just uh, I, I that one there. Um, I just yeah. I really appreciate um, you know the, the 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 your images. I think they look fantastic, and I'm I'm pretty sure that um, that everyone got a, a real kick out of it. Um, so, so what uh, what you, no, it's a pleasure, man. So what we'll do here is um, you know the, the the questions that have come through I've asked, but um, you know there might be questions afterwards on um, on Facebook, etc. Um, but I wanted to just say a, a huge thank you to you for uh, for coming through and showing your your work. Um, I really got a kick out of it. I'm sure everyone else did. And um, yeah, let's see what uh, what the guys have to say in the comments. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And uh, thank yeah. you for the invite. And yeah, thank you for what you're doing uh, in the lockdown. Yeah, you know, it's, it's giving us all something to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. No, it's a, it's a pleasure. So thank you for for entertaining us. And um, yeah, we'll uh, see. See, maybe next time we'll get you on for something else. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Eh? Bye.